You got it, brother. Hey, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ahashim, Yahweh Shai, Ahashim, Harakwakadash. Peace, love, and salutations to you, sincere brothers, um, the true believers that's uh, co laboring with us, helping us uh, noise the true gospel abroad, all right, uh, on the four corners of the earth, which is uh, the most high sent his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, on the earth. Um, to establish a new covenant, all right, to do away with the old covenant, to do away with the Levitical priesthood, the ordinances that were set set up, uh, which was really set up as a foreshadow of something to come. Um, it all alluded to, and when you go into uh, the Old Testament, you know, it was all these stories that was alluding to the, the coming of our Lord and Savior, which is the Redeemer, all right, of the earth, the Redeemer for all those that, that believe on him all right and he shed his blood um he was that sacrificial lamb uh he was the atonement for sins he is that rock um for the remission of sins that whosoever shall believe on his word have faith in him and what it was that he came to do um and through your faith that's enough to deliver you to redeem you uh, from the curses that was set up uh pursuant to that first covenant um which we broke in no time all right immediately when moses went up to achieve the uh, uh the law which came with stipulations it wasn't just the law it came with a contract all right um the children of israel uh was guilty all right of 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 worshiping idols and aaron at the time he was the uh mediator so he went back up to the mountain to give intercessions for the nation of israel and the lord said um he was going to blot out names out of the book of life. All right. And when you go into the book of Hebrews, uh, essentially a quick synopsis of what the book of Hebrews is telling you is warning you that you indeed being a Hebrew Israelite could have your name blotted out of the book of life. All right. And, and you, it's warning you um, not to make the same mistake um, that our forefathers made in the wilderness. All right. So, you know, without no further ado, we got a couple of precepts uh, we're going to go into. And always is the purpose is, you know, Yahweh Shah Mashiach is the center of our doctrine, you know. And, and, and for you brothers that are sincere, when you hit that record button, you know, when you upload them videos, Yahweh Shah should be the, the center of your attention. Um, edifying, teaching, um, which edifying means to build you up. Anytime you, you click on us. Um, our, 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 our goal is to edify, build you brothers and system, sisters up in the knowledge, wisdom of faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh okay? So whatever you brothers got, we read them off and, um, you know, yeah. we'll just, we'll flow from there. I got you real quick. I got you. Like, I like to start off with uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. All right, because it kind of touched on two things you mentioned. You mentioned about Yahweh Shah being the center of our doctrine and also how one can give up their birthright. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to just get start off in uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. It says, we're foreseeing. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us see aside every weight. It says, and the sin which can so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Right? Look unto Yahweh Shah, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the sin and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that goes back to what you mentioned about uh, uh, the gospel, right? What does, what does the gospel consist of? All right. It talks about how Yahweh Shah was born. All right. Yep. Uh, his life, uh, his death and his resurrection. All right. And with that being said, after Yahweh Shah did, right, when he was, uh, uh, you know, he endured the cross, despising the shame because he knew that was his duty. All right. He was now exalted. And he sat on he sits on the right hand of the heavenly father. All right. And now that's why it says, Now the, the son of man shall be glorified. All right. Because that time is, uh, uh, of his uh crucifixion was coming, and then he was resurrected. Now this word had to be preached. All right. So that's going into the gospel. Now the story of Yahweh Shai, what he came and did had to be preached to the world. All right. Because um, but considering him that in, endured such uh contradiction of sinners against himself. At least you be weary and faint in your mind. So we have to have the same mind as Yahweh Shai. All right. We understand that pushing uh, the gospel 
All right, pushing the new covenant, we're going to go up against great opposition. All right, there's going to be men that's going to be willing to uh, put you out there. Or just like, uh, for instance, look at uh, Paul. All right, Paul had to endure a, a, a lot of a lot of trials and tribulation uh, uh, preaching his gospel. He said he was stoned. You know what I'm saying? He was beaten with stripes. All right, he was shipwrecked. He was in peril amongst his own men. All right, the same way that how God had to go through it, uh, we also gonna have to go through about pushing this word. Scripture says, um, uh, if, if they hated you, just know they hated me first. That's what Yahweh Shai said. All right. So now going down, you want me to just continue on or just uh, um, uh, well, jump? <laughs> since you said that, right? Um, yep. Can you go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven? Well, I got you right here. You want the book of Second Corinthians? Yeah, the book of Second uh, Corinthians, the eleven chapter. Yep. Yep. You want me to start at one or? Uh, no, start at twenty. Uh, start at twenty. Uh, Twenty-one. This is Second Corinthians eleven and twenty-one. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How about wearing so ever any is bold? I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Mashiach? I speak as a fool. I am more, and labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watching often, in hunger, in thirst, in fasting often, in cold, in nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches. Continue on. Um, keep going. Who is weak? And am I not weak? Who is offended? And I burnt not? I must needs glory. I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The Lord and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shamashiach, which is blessed for more, know if that I lie not. Can, can you go to Romans chapter 8? Uh, Romans chapter eight, start at twenty nine. So Paul is is giving us a rundown of all the all the hell that he caught teaching his truth, right? And pearls of his own uh, men, and pearls of heathens, and pearls of of robbers. Um, this is just something you're gonna face opposition, and it's gonna be innocently though. So there's gonna be no need to really de de defend yourself. Your words are gonna speak for themselves, right? Yahweh Shai died an innocent man. All the apostles were all falsely accused of things. They falsely accused Stephen of what it was they accused him of. You know, um, slander is a weapon of Satan. It says, these be they that accused them. Um, and it's that Revelation, the 12th chapter. So that's something that's going to come um, with this territory, with this game. People are going to try to knock you off your pivot. But that's their role. That's their lot. Guys are yeah. back in their lots. Your argument, if I may add, because with all that going on, he said in verse 28, the care of all the churches, meaning with all that going on, he had the care for the Lord's work, care to preach the gospel, the care for the churches, like all that came, all that came with the territory. You know, this is why the scripture tells us that, like the things uh, that we have to go through when we're called into this ministry. Con. Uh, yep. Uh, Romans 8, uh, you should start at verse 20, 29. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you at thirty. Pick a good spot. Yep, thirty. Moreover, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me start up. I saw that twenty six. Likewise, okay. the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. But he that searches the heart knoweth what is. What, what is the mind of the spirit? Because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. 
And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Yeah, real well, quick, if I, could, if I could speak on that real quick, right? So all yeah. things, right? We know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And there's another uh, precept that says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So even when guys try to make an attempt to slander us and, and, and paint us in a bad light, you see how the Heavenly Father could hit, hit you with the Uno reverse card, right? And, 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 and your folly will be displayed throughout all Israel. So there's nothing that you can do against the truth. Like our word is going to stand. Who we are is who we are. You know what I'm saying? But um, slander and, and the mud, we're always going to get through that. You know what I'm saying? We're always going to get through that and come out clean. You know, continue on, bro. It says uh, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, mm -hmm. he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Yep. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he called, he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yeah, the, the, to be justified is to be uh, uh, found or be deemed worthy in the eyes of God, or to be deemed oh. righteous, to, to be deemed righteous in the eyes of God, right? Go ahead. Perfect, perfect right. as well, bro. I have a precept too to back you after you finish that one off. All right, come on, come on. It says, um, verse 31, what shall yep. we then, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Hamashiach that died. Yeah, rather. And th that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes an intercession for us. Uh, now, what does it tell you in Romans, uh, this, this very same chapter, right? There is now no new condemnation for them that dwell in Yahweh's side. So it's not mm -hmm. us who live. It says it's Yahweh's side that died. When Yahweh's side died with him, the elect died with him also. And what was risen up is a new man, right? And, 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 and because the spirit of the Lord is in us and we have the mind of God, um, we know that he got rid of that old law, which was the law of condemnation. And because we don't hold on to that old law, which is a law of condemnation, and not just that, but Yahweh Shai is now our mediator and he make intercessions for us. Um, the scripture is going to tell you. Continue on, bro. Because, because I, I want to say this before you read. This is what we believe deep down in our heart. And, and, and we're going to be judged, and not just us, but the world is going to be judged, predicated based off their understanding. That's why it tells you in John, the third chapter, that if, if, if whoever self shall believe, right, the same shall be saved, right? So you're going to be, the Lord is dealing with us, predicated based off our understanding. And we can see that in these last days, a lot of uh, men who claim to push the new covenant, they don't have this understanding. They're going about to establish righteousness in accordance to their own will. And this is no surprise because there's been examples of men all throughout the scriptures who has done this. They have walked this path. They have walked this walk. And it never ended well for them. Right? Continue on. It says, um, uh, who also make an intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Amashia? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or perils? or sword as it is written for thy sakes we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in Hamashiach Yahushai, our Lord. Oh, come, come man. I could grab um, 2 Corinthians 8 because you mentioned something for we can do nothing against the truth, but you also mentioned other things. I want to start up with 5, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, because it says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own, own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Mashiach is in you? Yahushai Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know 
that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to the Lord that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And if I can read a little down, it says, for we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish even your perfection. Therefore, I write these things being absent, least being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the Lord of love and peace shall be with you. Go ahead, bro. You want to speak on that? Yeah, Con Connor was going back to the things that you were saying about us being justified and going back to what you were saying about you can't do nothing against the truth but but for it so the lord's telling us not to slander the lord's telling us not to do any type of evil but yet you have men doing the opposite and and this is a conversation that we had yesterday sometimes you got to look in the mirror as the scripture says and you got to really examine yourself and ask you like which way are you going like 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 are you out here slandering men or you out here doing these things that the Lord told you not to do? You really got to sit back and, and like really evaluate yourself sometimes to see like what side you're on if you're leading yourself to destruction. Yeah, the scripture uh, said, uh, uh, you got it, Crub. And I was going to say, too, going back to verse 5 when it says, um, mm -hmm. examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves, right? How, it says, know you not your own self. How that Yahweh HaMashiach is in you. So how do you identify that Yahweh HaMashiach is in you? Right when you go to Matthew the fifth chapter, right? When you go to Matthew the fifth chapter, I'm gonna pull it up, and it, and, and it gives you the layout, right, of these words that the Lord has said. Right? It talks about how you deal amongst each other, how you deal with uh, uh with situations. Right? Uh, I said, uh, love thy enemy, so on and so forth. You go to the sixth chapter, it goes into the same thing. You go to the seventh chapter as well, right? But also. When you go to what is the Galatians, the fifth chapter, right? Go to Galatians five. That's primarily that sums up everything that's in Matthew five through seven, right? And it goes into 22, five and 22. Yep. This is how you know that Hamashiach is in you. It says, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law, right? So with that being said, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not uh, examining yourself and seeing if you're putting forth these attributes, these traits, then that's letting you know that you're you're, you're removed from uh, Mashiach. But when you go up to verse uh, nineteen, it says, how the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery, uh, fornication, uncleanness. Hold on, oblivious. slack your bro. You gotta read yeah. eighteen because the oh, yeah. root of this starts at eighteen. You know what I'm saying? The reason why. Uh, these men walk in the flesh and they produce these fruits, which is displayed in front of men, is because they're not being led of the spirit, right? Yeah, read 18. Yep, it says, But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Read it again. But if you be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Just one more time. But if you be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now it's going to show you. So when you're dealing with the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit is evidence. Um, is, is, is evidence, right? That a man has the Holy Spirit on him, which is the literal spirit of God in him. He has the mind of God, right? So you can't not, when you have this spirit on you, you you're going to show this. This is how it's going to be displayed. The Lord said, you shall know them by their fruits. Know a tree by its fruits. That's right. Hey, Zion, if I could ask something as you read that, because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are perfected unto the Lord. That's why when I was reading 2 Corinthians 13, it mentioned it twice. Even when Karab mentioned Matthew 5, after the Lord lays out everything, he says, be ye perfect like your father, which is in heaven. So if you hold into the flesh, the scripture tells you that you um just to back what you just read, how you are no longer under the law. Why? Because it says in Hebrews 7 and 19, I believe it says the law makes nothing perfect. So it's letting you know, bro. It's all tying in. When you go into um, Hebrews, the seventh chapter, it tells you that the uh, Levitical priesthood was done away with because in that Levitical, Levitical priesthood, it couldn't perfect you. So what we're dealing with is perfection through the spirit. Nobody can be perfected via the law. 
you're imperfect no. via the law. You're <laughs> condemned. You're guilty via the law. But in the spirit, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, which is the spirit of God, because he completed that since he yep. went through that. And when he becomes in you, what happens is you die. You're dead. And now you are perfect. You are a perfect being in Yahweh Shai, right? Yep. But I want to I wanna touch on this real quick, bro, Yakulam, because um, it, it tells you right as as the fruits of the spirit which is joy you know peace long suffering gentleness as that that that's evidence as a man that has a holy spirit on him, there is evidence as a man that does not have the holy spirit on him and i want to i want after this i want you to look up uh spiritual discernment because what spiritual discernment is is the ability for you Pull it up that, right that's, now. it's a gift that's given from the holy ghost and it, this gift allows you to be able to discern righteous spirits um from evil spirits and why is this important because these spirits are literally leading you somewhere regardless of how you feel what's your thoughts on it there's a spirit that's going to lead you up and a spirit that's going to lead you down a spirit that's going to lead you to righteousness a spirit that's going to lead you to wickedness and if you don't have the ability to be able to spiritually discern what's what and who's who in these last days um you are going to trip you're going to fall you're going to find yourself amongst um these men that are going to lead you literally to your destruction there's a thin line between being around somebody because you want to help them out but there has to be a line in which you draw in the sand where it's like look bro you're not going to drag me your, your energy is not going to drain my energy to the point where you drag me down to the point where i no longer believe the truth because i'm um I'm rolling after you, right? So a spiritual discernment, if you could look that up, the definition of it, and then we'll Come go on, right this back says, um, to Galatians. Th there's a couple. One is spiritual discernment is a skill that allows people to use the Lord's word to distinguish between truth and error and right and wrong. A way to perceive the wisdom, Proverbs 8 and 1 through 6, that the Lord speaks to us all day long in the scriptures and the books that we read. That's the two that came up for me. All right, so this is just discernment, right? It says the ability ability to judge well, right? It is also says judgment, uh, refinement, cultivation, uh, enlightenment, insight. It also says perception in the absence of judgment, with a view of abstaining spiritual guidance and understanding. Right, you don't it, want you don't want nobody to just tell you, you know, what I'm saying to lead you the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? You go ahead, bro. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I got a quick precept too. Uh yeah. to back you up. I'm gonna have to bounce back to Galatians, but um I got you real quick. Because this is why this is laid out right here. Hey Karam, and as you get that, I was gonna say that's why Yahweh Shai said himself, you should know a tree by its fruit. And then he laid out all these measurements. What we're about to read in Galatians should let you know that should be an examining stick on. You know who, who who you're following or the things that you're teaching if it's but to go on brother salak yeah 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 on. this is matthew 15 and 10. and he called the multitude and said unto them hear and understand right hear and understand not that not that which this is not that which go in into the mouth it says the follow the man but that which coming out of the mouth this the father they man and this is a very important tool because the scripture says uh, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? And if a man is working or operating off to the works of the flesh, you can tell by the things that he's saying, all right? You have to, like, once again, but you have to have that discernment. A man can say that they believe in the Bible, but their actions and their words, they don't, uh, you can tell uh, that, 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 you know what I'm saying? That there's no light in them if he's speaking according to uh, the works of the flesh, right? Or if he's leaning towards the works of the flesh. It says, Thank you to his disciples and say, said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees Saki, were bro, Saki, can you, if your brother's not speaking, can you um mute your mic, Bubba Kasha? There's like noise in the background and stuff. Like, go ahead, bro. Yep, yep. It says, Uh, then his disciples, then they said, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest that thou and knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? It says, Um, he answered him, said, Every plant which my Heavenly Father have not planted shall be root, uh, shall be rooted up. Let them be alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. All right, blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Now the blind also represent those that lack discernment. All right, they they lack spiritual discernment. Why? Because they're just following a person into 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 uh, destruction. 
All right, he, that discernment yeah. to give you that, that that thought, like, damn, something ain't adding up here. Yeah. Right, right. Get <laughs> you, you know, get man, if I may add, man, because yeah, that uh, I'm gonna have you going against things that you don't even believe. Yeah. You don't even believe this, and you're sitting here teaching. You're pushing this vibration, um, and you don't even believe mm -hmm. it. Hey, hey, Zaman, if I may add, even with the definition that I brought up about you know using the Lord's word. It should be evident. Like if someone is 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 telling you, listen, man, you could do X, Y, Z. That's fine. But then Paul's giving a reminder in Corinthians, like, yo, listen, man, be ye not deceived. If you do X, Y, Z, you won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. You should always lean back on the Lord's words. If the Spirit is in you, you ain't gonna listen to what men are saying because you're always gonna measure it by the scriptures. Like, wait a minute, the scripture says that you ain't gonna enter in. That's right, and that goes back to saying every plant which my heavenly Father have not rooted up. I mean, not, not planted shall be rooted up, right? So those people, that, uh, what happens when 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 uh, that tree that doesn't provide fruit, what happens to it? It, it gets it gets uh, uh, cast into the fire. Well, all right. Let's, let's, can we go to Matthew's the third chapter real quick? Yep. Since we're still on a, um, the the wavelength of uh, basically these trees um, and fruit meet for repentance, and see how all yep. of this coexist because all of this goes together um all of this goes together so you could start pick a good spot here bro i saw that one okay go ahead really important to mention john the baptist <laughs> it says, in those days came john the baptist uh preaching in the wilderness of judea yeah, and that wilderness yeah. represents the age too and the yeah. significance of him going out into the wilderness is is this is the restart so what's happening here is is a, is a restart is happening right um john the baptist is heralding the coming of the lord you know he's preaching mm -hmm. about the coming of the lord right and he's saying what repent uh, for the kingdom is at hand but the reason why he went out to the wilderness is because it's just it's a fresh start we're leaving israel and we're coming back in but we're being baptized we're being washed we're going over jordan we're, we're starting back again just like we was circling around in the wilderness um around the time of moses you know what i'm saying we're starting fresh this is a fresh start right go ahead bro yeah even even to add on to um John the Baptist come from the line of the Levites right which goes into uh, uh the temple uh, his father was uh working in the temple he was burning incense but that was something that was already established that that was a system that was already going you know see uh you see John the Baptist he removed himself and he went into the wilderness to preach who the preacher Hawashai the preacher yep. coming of our Lord right and it's going to continue to say right and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand it says, but this it says, but this he uh but this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Right? It says, and in the same John had raiments of camel hair and uh it's a leather girdle about his lawn, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Right, even so his even appearance was different. Yep, yep, come on. That's why you got it. You got it. Now I can say that because a man could see uh would see John the Baptist and think him to be uh crazy or think right. him uh, him to be a uh, a bug out. Right. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he, because, he didn't have the borders of blue, he didn't have the, yep. the long robes and the fingers and the phylact the broader phylactery. Yep. You know, sitting in sitting in what is this? Uh this man sitting in Moses' seat. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This is this is ultimately what the Levites and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's what they did. But John the Baptist, he went outside. He was like, I'm going to the wilderness. And not just only that, that he had a, a, a huge following. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, which th those people that followed John the Baptist was literally seeking the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Right? But, uh, verse 5, it says, then went out to him. It says, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sin. But when... When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generations of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Hey, real right? quick, because that's what's happening now, right? When you say, oh, you generations of vipers, you're seeing a, like a lot of snakes um, are, are looking at what it is that we're doing. And they're, they're sl slithering in, you know, trying to spy out our liberties and, and Hamashiach, you know, asking us, what are we doing in? What's going on? Trying to inquire about this new um, 
this new heart that we're receiving, this new spirit that we're receiving, you know, this, this baptism, um, this word being preached and who is being preached to, you know, what it is that we're doing. So the same thing has to play out uh, over again, right? Continue on, bro. You got it. I got you. It says, um, and he said unto them, O generations of Bibles, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. It says, bring forth, therefore, fruits, meet for repentance. Right? Now, and, and, you got it, bro. Yep, you, got it. you got it, bro. All right, yeah. I was going to say, um, what says bring forth fruits, meet for repentance, you know, before or, or someone would think this to be uh, uh, bringing forth people, right? But it ultimately talks about the fruits of the spirit. Right. All right, your works. All right, bring forth fruits, meet for repentance. That's why he mentioned, oh, who had warned you to uh, flee from the wrath to come. Right, just because you coming to me to get baptized or coming to inquire and see what's going on, that he said that's not what's going to deliver you. He said, but the works that you do, right, and, and which is the fruits of the spirit, that is what's going to help you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is what's going to he said bring forth fruit meets for repentance. That right. is what's going to show uh, your, your sincerity. That right. is what's going to show right. your heart. And that was getting rid of that old because the old way was just you could just come around without these fruits. You know what I'm saying? As long as you gave sacrifice, as long as you did the ordinance that was, uh, which was the letter of the law, that was cool. But now we're dealing with with the spirit of the law. You know what I'm saying? Which is it requires an actual change in your mind. You know, a, it's a sincere change from within. It's not something that you could you could hide or you can't fake this. You know, you have to really be of this. You have to really believe this. You have to really, and not only believe, but you have to actually produce uh, 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 evidence. Which is the fruits of the spirit? Huh. Hey, prime example of that is the, the the example of those two men, right? One being a Pharisee, and the other one saying, "Lord, I'm a sinner," right? The, the Pharisee was saying, "Oh, I I, I tied, I, I keep the Sabbath, I do all these different things," right? But the man that beat upon his chest and said, "Lord, I'm a sinner," right? It's showing you his uh, uh his mindset, right? It's showing you his heart because the, the 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 one guy that beat upon his chest knew that he needed help. He knew right. he couldn't keep it perfect, right? But you had another man who, who was boasting in it, all right, which is not the fruits of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're boasting in something, so that means what? If somebody else lacks in that area, that's where condemnation comes in. Yeah, you're you know right there saying? to look down on him. You're right there checking oh. tags and make sure your their, their, their shirts is 100% oh. cotton. I think I think it also mentioned, he said, Oh damn! I think I gotta get it, bro. When he said, "I uh, thank God that I'm not like this guy" or something like that, what he yeah, that's exactly what he said. Yeah, he pointed yep. over and said, "I'm like not like this guy." You know what I'm saying? And, Karma, I was gonna say that he was basically condemning that dude based off that, based off that old, bro. But with Yahweh Shai, it tells you that there's new, there's no new condemnation. You can't yeah, condemn him in that. Yeah, real quick, this is um, this is uh, Luke chapter 18, um. Verse 11, I'm reading in NOT and I'm going to read it in the KJV. The Pharisees stood by him and prayed this prayer. I thank God that I'm not like the other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. You know? <laughs> the man pointing over the, and saying, yeah, I'm not like him. You know what I'm saying? Not, not only but, that, right? He, he, said, he said, I fast twice in a week. You know what I'm saying? I give tights of all that I possess, right? And you, you look at guys today, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you're not even a mere shadow of what, uh, like, the righteousness of, of, of a man today is, or, or and, and, and a man in the first century, I would say, when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, when we was in our land, isn't even comparable to this, to uh, today. So you got men that don't even fast twice a month, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that's condemning us and, 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 and you know, re ready to, to – uh, to, to throw us away in the trash that are worse than this guy here. So you don't even meet that same standard as these people did, but you still uh, find it upon yourself to, you know, continue to say that righteous men are wicked. You know, you gotta, you yeah. gotta examine what it is that you say. And, and, but you know what, at the same time, this is, this is just for you brothers to see, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to understand that people have their lot. This man has his lot, you know, he has his lot and other men like this, there's nothing that they can do. They're ordained to that condemnation from the beginning, you know? But you got it, brother. Yeah, yeah. Continue on, bro. Continue on. Verse 13 and 14. Uh, verse 13, it says, uh, And the publican standing afar off would not uh, lift up as much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful 
to me, a sinner. I right, tell if, I may mention, yep. if I may mention real quick, he says, right, it says that he would not lift up his eyes unto heaven, which shows he was in a humble state and beat upon his chest, which means he acknowledged his fault and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, right? And Yahweh Shah said, I came not for those that are whole, but I came to those that need a position. He came unto the sick, all right? So once again, this 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 publican was more justified as he's going to continue to say, right? Yep. It says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For the other that exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. But once again, this is, goes back to what the brother Yaklan brought. I think it's 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examining yourself. Right, because if you're walking in the sense of you're boasting in something, boasting in the law, boasting that you're keeping this, right? This story should let you know, right? Uh, who was more justified? It's and it also says he that exalted himself. It's not for you to exalt yourself, it's for the Lord to exalt you, right? Men walk around with that pride and say that they've been doing this for however many years, and you know what I'm saying? Like, once again, to the Lord, that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? To the Lord, that's nothing. If you're not doing exactly what the Lord told you to do and you're being obedient to Yahweh Shah's words, listen, you, you, that, that, that'll be counted as nothing. Uh, and you be, uh, we said the, uh, the Lord's not going to remember your works, basically. Right. All right. So it, it always goes, it goes back to humility, mercy. It goes back to the fruits of the spirit. Yep. That's all it goes back to. That, uh, that you know, from that tree, man. <laughs> uh -huh. The tree of life, man. Um, can we go yeah, back? Man, we... Well, John? Uh, we have, oh. Let's go back to John. Yep. yep John. Let's go back to John. Hold on, hold on. Was it John? No, it's a lock. It's a lock. Yep. Uh, Matthew 3, right? Matthew 3. Yeah, Matthew 3. John the Baptist. Yep. And it says, um, yep. Um, I'm going to read from verse 7 again. It says, but when well, you saw me. Out, because when, when, <laughs> when you read 3, what does it say? Confessing their sins. So yeah. the people confessing their sins are, are fruit. You know, this this that's the start basically. What they say, like um uh when it comes to um recovery, admitting is like the first stage, you know what I'm saying? So you got God it, you can't really repent truly in the spirit if you believe that you're on a level, you know what I'm saying? If you believe that you don't need the Lord, you don't need the Lord um because you are righteous, you're righteous enough to deliver yourself. This is what guys are saying um subconsciously. But it's just their spirit that's driving it. You have to confess your sins in order to be baptized. That's that's the thing about being baptized. But you're, you're, we're seeing that guys aren't being cleansed. They aren't being cleansed with the word, man. It's crazy. It's a crazy time that we're living in, man. Go ahead. You yep. got it, though, bro. Slap. Um, was it um, verse 7 again? Yep. But when he, saw, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, <clears throat> Salakia, he said unto them, O generations of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, mm -hmm. bring forth fruit. Bring forth therefore fruit, meet for repentance. Yep. And it says, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our fathers. Yep. It says, and it says, For I say unto you that God is able to able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now, now, this was the mind frame of these Pharisees and of these guys, not just the Pharisees, but anybody that would fall underneath this umbrella. They always tried to lean back on the fact that they had Abraham as their father. So John the Baptist was telling the elect, like, look, get out of this mind frame of you having Abraham as your father, because there's a consequence that is coming to men who are walking in their stead. You know what I'm saying? And it's not going to end well for you. So. This whole um keep going, bro. I let, let it speak for itself. Yep, yep. Uh verse 10. Yep. And now also the axe is laid on un, unto the root of the of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right. So literally, it's telling you how how John was baptizing men, which is to clean men up, right? But he was pointing towards Yahweh Shai to say, "Listen, I'm not even worthy to unlash his shoes, right? But what I'm doing is I'm basically uh, uh, uh how, like I'm prepping you, all right? So when you when you when you when you see this man and you hear this man." You will do, you know what I mean? You will, you will be converted. You will be ready to accept what he's going to give you. All right. He's going to, which is that baptism. 
Right. Right. You can read that so last that's... verse too when you finish. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, finish your point. Yep, you got it. Yep, yep. And it says, um, uh, verse twelve: Whose sin is in his hand, and he will thoroughly, uh, thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with the unquenchable fire. And if you notice, right, it says he will gather the wheat into the garner. And there's another story or a parable that talks about the wheat and the tears. All right. So you gotta you gotta you gotta see how everything is playing out and lining up within the scriptures, man. All right. That wheat represent those that obeyed and followed the Lord. The tears represent the uh, the ungodly, the wicked, those that disbelieve, those that are uh, uh, disobedient. All yeah, right. If, if, if like you want to go to that Karab, it's Matthew 13. If you want to yep. get into that, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 co- it's very cohesive with with everything. I, yeah, and and it's it's the reason why he made mention of it too, like. Um, being an Israelite, uh, being of Abraham, of uh, being of Isaac, um, can, can profit you nothing if you don't receive this Holy Ghost. If the mm-hmm. Heavenly Father doesn't reveal himself to you through his son, if you don't repent, if you don't admit that you need him, if you don't produce the fruits of the spirit, that's how you're going to get into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Uh, Matthew 13, 24, another parable he put forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. Now, right? now when you, you, you can see you can see the separation um starting uh with Cain. You know what I'm saying? You had uh Adam uh had multiple sons, you know, but um Cain and Abel is uh, where the scriptures home in on. You know what I'm saying? Cain offered up a sacrifice that was uh, corrupted, you know, um, but Abel offered up one that was accepted. And then you see the split between, um, you'll see it between uh, Isaac and Ishmael. You'll see it Mm -hmm. between Hagar and Sarah. You'll see it between uh, Jacob uh, and Esau. You even seen it within um, Manasseh and Ephraim. Um, you see different splits for different stories, for different blessings, which were all analogies that was going to play out in the spirit on how things would operate. You'll see Paul will go on and say what? That uh, that Ishmael represented the bond woman, all right, that was going to end up persecuting the free woman, which was Isaac. And we're, oh, we're free. And so you see us exercising our freedoms and our liberties in Yahweh Shai. And people are mad about that. So this is something that's just going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So the, the this is what the scriptures is speaking about. And, and, and you know that it's separated like this in the spirit and not separated according to the flesh because the Lord is not dealing with the flesh. As soon as Yahweh Shah Mashiach spoke to the um the Pharisees and he told them this information, um, and it started with John the Baptist by saying, um, say not to unto yourselves, you have Abraham as a father. The heavenly father is able to rise up stones to be children of Abraham, which he did, which was these lively stones, which are these people that are from the other nations. And then Yahweh Shah Mashiach in, in John, the eighth chapter, said, Ye, your father, the devil. He let you know that he was making a separation but within the nation of Israel. And Paul went and tripled down on it and solidified it in Romans, the ninth chapter, when he said, just because you are of the seed, uh, not all Israel is of Israel or just because you're Abraham's seed. And then in Galatians, he put the cherry on top by letting you know, like, look, this is what the scripture was saying when he said uh, the children of Abraham. It was going to be predicated based off of who had faith. It was going to be done with faith. This was going to let you know this was going to be the indicator as to who's who. So this thing is completely spiritual. Right. So in this oh. parable, in order to understand it, this parable, you need to understand how these how these men are speaking in the spirit. You got it, Yakalim. No, I was gonna add, plus Karab brought it out in Galatians 5 and 22. When you see these words, it tells you faith, which there is no law. So there is no faith of that old. Just to back that, just to always push that home. There's no friends that you can look at that'll have you to have faith in your Shah, bro. No board of blue mm-hmm. to 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 show you the love, to show you to be meek, to show you to be patient, because yeah, bro. That's right. Um, verse 26, Matthew 13, 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruits, all right, once again, the fruit being uh, presented, right, then also the tears appeared. So the servants of the household came, householder came and said unto him, Sir, is not thou so good seed in the field, in thy field? 
For whence then have it tears? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servants said unto, unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and, and, and gather them up? But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tears, ye, ye root up also the wheat with them. And it says, Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in, in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tears. And bind them in, bun in, in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And it's important to understand, like, why it was mentioned to let them grow together. All right, because there was going to be a time where men that was that was that was that was being wicked. All right, there was going to transform. There was going to be men that was going to repent and become a uh, uh, wheat. You get what I'm saying? So this time, this duration of time has to play out. You have to let give the opportunity. The scripture says, um. Uh, let's get this real quick. Uh, Second Peter's three. Second Peter's three. We gotta understand the duration of time and, and why it's laid out the way it is, right? Second Peter's three. Um, right here, uh, three and nine. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering. What is long suffering? Let's get that real quick. All right. In the blue letter, long suffering. This is to be of a long spirit, to not to lose heart. This is to preserve patiently and bravely and endure misfortune and troubles, to be patient and bearing the offense. All right, to be long suffering, slow to anger, slow to punish. All right. So once again, he he said, I, right, you know what? Let them grow together. And then once 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 the time of the harvest come, I'm gonna allow the reapers to do their thing, right? So going back three and nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. All right, as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to us, were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see what I'm saying? So that that that, that opportunity has to be given. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said, The Lord let the sun arise and shine upon the just and the unjust. That's right. You get what I'm saying? So the Lord That's has right. to present this opportunity for all men. Why? Because men has to make that decision. The scripture says this: no man can serve two masters. You have to pick a side. There's no plan in between. All right. If you conduct the fruits of the spirit, it clearly shows that you are on the side of Yahweh Shah. If you choose the other, the works of the flesh is true. Uh, you're choosing the works of the ways of Satan. All right. Once again, just like how Adam and Eve, you know, uh, they, they there was uh two trees. You know what I'm saying? A decision yep. had to be made. You get what I'm saying? Yep. They say eat of this tree, all right. You are there's two trees right there. Don't don't eat of this tree. And guess what? They made a decision which brought all this chaos, and which we to this day still dealing with, right? But Yahweh Shah came to reapply uh, that decision again. Like, all right, listen, now I'm gonna come. It's gonna be by way of me. Do you believe on my, believe on me or you don't believe upon me? Let's go to John. Come on, come on, come on, but you get that. You know, it goes back to that faith because the scripture tells you that when that schoolmaster was around, faith was shut up. During that time period, and then after when Yahweh Shai came and did what he did, and that schoolmaster was put away with, then it was faith. This is why, just to back what you're saying about you know having faith in Yahweh mm -hmm. Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's right. Um, let's get it real quick, right? Because John the third chapter is a beautiful, a beautiful chapter, right? And it gives you the layout of what Yahweh Shai came to do. First, he speaks unto Nicodemus and told him he had to be born again, which clearly shows you. Nicodemus was being carnal. He's like, how can a man go back into his mother? Right? Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? And right. he, the Lord was like, yo, listen, you being a man, a uh, uh, master of the law, you don't know these things. You get what I'm saying? But it was talking about the Holy Spirit. And when it says, um, real quick, verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the, his mother's womb and be born? Right? And it says, uh, how shall I answer it? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, right? And when you look up the word womb or look into what, what, the, what the womb does, the womb fashions the child, right? This is, this, is, this is where the womb holds the child, but the child is fashioned within that womb. So once again, if you liken it into the being born of the spirit, right, and water, the, the spirit, the Holy Ghost is what's going to fashion you to become this new man. It's going to shape you and mold you into the image of Hamashiach, which we read earlier, right? It says, so now it lets you know that if you're, if you're conformed, all right, and you're shaped into this image of Hamashiach, then you are allowed to enter into the kingdom. 
Hey, Why? Can I, can I, it's beautiful. Can I read this scripture for you real quick? You real it, quick, brother. right? Real quick. This is Psalms 51 because I want to show you this. I want to show you how David, I want to show you brothers and sisters how David was revealed this new covenant. He, 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 he was revealed that this was the only way to go, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 51 verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy a loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Block oh, out my quick. transgressions. You real got it, quick. Those two words, loving kindness and mercy, they come from where? Right? The fruits of the spirit, the right? Of this is spirit. something that these are attributes that the Heavenly Father has that we're, you know what I mean, that, that we can bestow upon us as well. These are characteristics that the Heavenly Father has, but it also says the same way he is merciful, he will also bring forth wrath. Right, so once again, there's a decision that had to be made. Either you're gonna choose and act, you understand, know by uh, the, the mercies and the loving kindness of the Lord, right, or you're gonna choose the side of His wrath. Right, but you got it, brother. <laughs> and real quick, then, because you said that, um, go to Colossians chapter two, verse fourteen, real quick, because it says right here. You see where it says, uh, "blotting out." Um, yep. You said Colossians two fourteen. Yeah, two verse fourteen, right. I got you right here. It's the book of Colossians 2 and 14. It says, um, you want me to start at 11 or just straight to the point? No, just straight to the point. Okay. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out the way, nailing it to the cross. Now let's go back to um let's go back to uh Psalms 51. Right, yep. because what does it say in Psalms fifty-one? Um, it says, uh, "It says, uh, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions." So, what did Yahweh Mashiach do when he was on the cross? He blotted out our transgressions. Right? It says. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. What was John the Baptist doing in the wilderness? He was baptizing you. How do you get baptized? You what does that mean to be submerged in the water? What is the word of the word to take on the word? Right? For I acknowledge my transgression. I what for I acknowledge my transgression. One more time. I acknowledge my transgression. It's a form of being baptized or being born again, as realizing that you need Yahweh. We're not perfect. In the flesh, we're not perfect in the law, right? We need Yahweh Shai, right? It says, and my sin is ever before me against thee, thee only have I sinned and have done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. That's why in Romans, it tells you, right? That we were all found guilty underneath yeah. the law, underneath the Levitical priesthood so that when the Most High speaks, he's justified. He's justified in destroying each and the last one of us. That's where... uh. Uh, grace comes into play because it's something that we're not worthy of. So grace is a gift that's given to us, predicated based off our belief. Everlasting life is not a a, a thing that can be earned based off your own will by how you keep the law. That's why we're going to go to Romans, the 10th chapter. And this is the whole point of this whole um, a, a message in this gospel that we're not worthy to receive everlasting life predicated based off our own will or something that's solely given to us. This is what you need to understand, right? It says, behold, I was sharpened in iniquity and the sin, uh, uh, did, I, did I skip something? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and in sin, did my mother conceive me? Behold, thou desirest truth in thy inward parts. Where? In thy inward parts. This is uh, putting on a new man. This is the inward man growing and the outward man dying every day. This is new covenant. <laughs> This is new covenant talk, right? And the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop. What did we do at the time of the Passover? We dipped the blood in, on the hyssop branch and we we, we passed it on the uh, the doorposts of, of our homes, of our houses. What did Yahweh Shahmashiach did? He shed his blood so that we could um, be in that house of protection. We could be underneath that um, umbrella and clean me and wash me and I should be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. These are more fruits of what? The Holy Spirit, right? That the bones which thou has broken in me may rejoice. Uh, has broken, Slakia, may rejoice. Now, you could go back, Karab. I just wanted to get that point yeah. just, just because it was it was important to, you know, the segue um, off of that, that, that thought. 
Oh, it's just that. Uh, oh, real quick. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What's this? <laughs> okay, you got it, bro. You got it. You got it. You got it. No, okay, no, 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 you got it. 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 Yeah, yeah. I was say, um, yeah. So going back, John, uh, three and verse six, right? It says that which is born of the flesh is flesh, right? And what are you gonna do? You're gonna produce the works of the flesh. Now hold on, bro. Salakia, brother. Salakia, huh? Salakia. Can we go to Galatians real quick? Yeah, Can I go got to you. Galatians Which one? Real quick? Let's go to Galatians five. Three. Right. Okay. You want to do five? Yeah. Go, let's go to Galatians five and let's read up because Paul makes mention of this war between the flesh and between the spirit. Right. Now, if your right, brothers are walking 16. in the spirit, real quick. Sorry. If your brothers is walking in the spirit, you 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 you're looking at um. Uh, our forefather Isaac and Rebecca, and when Rebecca had entreated the heavenly Father, there was a beef that was in the womb, right? She said these th these two things are struggling in my womb. So we're making mention of being born again, all right? Struggling in the womb. Now, what does it tell you? Um, give me Galatians chapter five, uh, verse seventeen. Five verse seventeen says this. Um, matter of fact, sixteen. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So Jacob, but if, Jacob, Jacob rest, uh, wrestling that angel, you know, he was changed to what? Yashala, which is a son of God, a prince of power, right? But Esau was a man of the field, right? He was a man of the flesh. Just like um, you had... You had, oh, uh, what's this guy? Cain was a man of the field, right? While Abel was what? A tiller of the sheep. King David was a what? Um, a man, a, a, another a keeper of the sheep, right? With a shepherd, Yahweh, right? Shia, a shepherd, right? When you go to, oh, what's that? At John, the 10th chapter, it tells you uh, who's the way, the door, and the sheepfold. Um, so yep. so the, the, all these things was alluding to these two two major clashes, Esau being an end of the world and Jacob being the beginning of it that followeth. The the flesh is always lust um, is wrestling against the spirit, and the spirit likewise against the flesh. They're contrary toward one another, so that you can't be able to do the things that you would. Now you could go back to what you had, bro, because it's gonna yep. tie back in. We'll come back here and it's gonna tie it all in um beautifully. Right? John three and six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, <clears throat> and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. All right, so once again, if you're born of the spirit, you're going to produce the works of the spirit. Marvel not that I can't, I said unto thee, ye must be born again. It says, The wind bloweth where it is listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, Said unto him, How can these things be? Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Right? It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you of earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And that's beautiful because once again, Yahweh shall mention, uh, He said, I am from above and you are from beneath. Right, so if he can't condescend and you can't understand his, you know, what I mean, the the how can I say it? the more simplified, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying part of his teaching, what makes you think you can deal with the more heavenly or complex things? You know, what I'm saying it says, um, the, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, yeah, because they are yep. spiritually yep. Yep. right. So, what happens yep. Yep. is it talks about being carnally minded, yeah, yep. well, and what happens is in order to understand. These heavenly things, you have to be pulled up. You have to be elevated. You have to be uh, uh, brought up in the spirit. All right. Now you, now you're basically face to face dialogue with your house and have that understanding. You get what I'm saying? But if you're on the bottom, it's two, it's, it's, it's two different frequencies. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to give you. The Lord is going to give you uh, the basic things. Once again, if you don't understand it, then how how is He going to give you uh, much greater things? Right. Verse 13, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. All right. Uh, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. Right. Um, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have ever eternal life. Right. Like this is this is this is this is uh, very important. That whosoever 
believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is why it says that there's uh, no no condom, no new condemnation, yeah. right? Because once again, it ain't according to man. Even going back to King David, right? It was mentioned uh, that there was a judgment that was being laid out, right? And David had a pick of the judgments, right? And David said, "What, Lord, you choose my judgment because men aren't merciful, right? You know what I'm saying? So once again, if we leave it in the hands of men." Bro, yo, we're that's screwed. what Paul said. Man. <laughs> we killed all day long, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're done for. We wouldn't have access to everlasting life if it was left to men and holding that standard, uh, which is which is the law. Oh, now nah, you ain't keeping the law. Art. You get what I'm saying? We, oh, you're not doing this. You don't have to. Yeah, men it. right now cannot dimmin us under that you know old, bro. Exactly. So now it's not it's not of you. It's of Yahweh Shah. He's who justifies. And he's who condemn. Right. He's the one that makes that decision. And even when he had the, 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 the choice to condemn that woman, he told her to go away and sin no more. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, verse um, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso, whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is very important, too, because we understand that this is a conversation or this is something that was in the heavens, right? That, that played out in the heavens that came down. It tells you about the loves um, uh the, the heavenly father's emotion towards the world, right? It tells you about his son and his duty of what he came into world into the world to do, right? For God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoso believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, who's this world that is talking about? Right. We understand that. We understand that it talks about. Oh, let's get to the verse of the next verse, right? It says, "He yep. that believeth, he he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already." So the Lord ain't talking about the ones that don't believe. <clears throat> that world don't represent those that 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 don't believe. It's talking about the believers, right here. It says, "For God sent not His Son to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved." These are the people that's going to be saved. Right here, you're going to be justified through the Lord, but the people that don't don't uh, believe, once again, they're they're in the middle. The Lord said, uh, like uh, not being lukewarm. He yep. said, if you're lukewarm, you're gonna spew out his mouth. You can't uh, serve two masters. Spiritual uh, uh, fornication, adultery. You know, being married yep. to two covenants, yeah. um, yep. mixing uh, patches, old old clothes with uh. You know, new patches, new patches, old clothes, old bottles, oh, you know, yep. new wine, yep, new wine, yep. old bottles, yep. It says, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, right? And believing in the name ain't just saying that you the names of Yahweh Shah, it's more to just the name. The name comes with a uh, 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 image, it comes with characteristics, it comes yep. with responsibility, it comes yep. with duties. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, this is what the name consists of. You need evidence. Right? You need evidence, yeah. which is the Holy Spirit. You need to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's evidence. So that's your mm -hmm. card, basically, your VIP pass to entering into this kingdom. You got it, bro. Yeah, yeah, because it also says uh, faith without works is dead. People say, what is the works? Do you keep the law? Listen, let's talk about the, the fruits of the Spirit. That's right. Because it says in order for you to obtain mercy, you have to show mercy. What is that? That's the fruits of the Spirit. Yep. Right? Um, Verse 19, and this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. These men chose their side. This is the con this these this is where people are condemned. This is where the judgment and those that's going to be cast into other uh, that 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 what is it, that fire? And this what is, is that? That's that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What are you doing? What is blasphemy? It's rejecting. You're literally yeah. rejecting the Spirit of God. Which is the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, which will produce these fruits that will get you known and get you recognized and it makes you intimate with the Heavenly Father. That's why he said, depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I have not known you. He wasn't intimate with you. You have to be intimate. He has to reveal himself to you. And once he reveals himself to you, you're not concerned about the flesh. How somebody looks, their skin color, where they're from, that's all carnal stuff. 
old carnal ordinances that mean absolutely nothing, uh, endless genealogies, and you're not concerned with none of that stuff. Doing videos off of strife and contention and envy and jealousy and hatred and fake love and and scoffing, and you, you're not you're not you're not concerned with none of that stuff. That's stuff from the other tree, you know. Yeah. That's stuff from that 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 produces no fruit. That 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 produces fruit worthy to be um, put up in a, in in a shaft and burnt in a fire, which is that second death. All those right. works will be put to death. You know, those works get you nowhere. It gets That's you right. nowhere. You got it, twenty. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light. This is these should be reproved. Right, because right? if you don't like us, what do we do to you? If you don't like us, all we're doing is giving you the word of the Heavenly Father in truth and sincerity. So if you don't like the Lord, you're not going to like the people um, who he, he, he's ordained and commissioned. He ordained uh, his disciples to preach the gospel to every creature. That's what he ordained his, his disciples to do. That's beautiful because that goes, that goes into the next verse, right? It says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God, right? And once again, if we're supposed to let our light shine before men, right? That means you have, you have uh, it says that he that doeth truth cometh to the light, right? So that lets you know that you're on the side of Yahweh shot. But then it says to let your light shine before the Gentiles. So this has to be this this is ultimately you pushing forward Yahweh shot to the world. This is what it is. This is what's about. It ain't about anybody. It ain't none of ain't about none of us. It's about Yahweh shot being pushed out there right. to the forefront. Let him be glorified. Just like he right. said, just like Moses lift up the staff, the staff in the wilderness, the Son of Man shall be lifted up. You know what I'm saying? So we lifting up the Lord. We showing that the Lord is, is is who you need to turn to, who you need to seek. Ain't by way of no that's the, Yep, that's the blessings and curses. When you accept uh -huh. Yahweh Shai, you receive these blessings. Matthew's the fifth chapter. But when you reject His Holy Spirit, right, you're condemning yourself, and it's predicated based off your belief. You not believing in the words that He He laid forth, and you turn everything. The proofs you don't believe is because you turn the the words upside down. So for they say the Gentiles, you say that that's not. All throughout the Old Testament, the Gentiles are, are, are uncircumcised. The uncir we know who the uncircumcised is, right? We know who the Gentiles is. It's only a problem once the Gentiles or the uncircumcised is now accepted. You understand what I'm saying? That's when it's only a problem now that, it, oh, okay, now we got to define who's the Gentiles. Now we got to define or, or hell. Now we got to, oh, we don't believe hell. You know what I'm saying? So we got to remix it to make it a uh, uh, fit our narrative or our camp doctrine. You know, no, no, this is, this is, you guys don't believe the word. You don't believe that that angel is an angel. You don't believe that that woman was a virgin. You don't believe the word. So because you don't believe the word, there's consequences for taking and twisting up the scriptures the way that you guys do. You're literally leading men to their destruction. You're causing them not to believe in, in, in the word. You're taking out from the word. You're adding to the word. That's right. That's why it says, um, damn, um, let's see real quick. Yeah, what is it? Um, Revelations, right? Uh, 22. 22. Let me see. Let me see. Um, uh, 22 and uh, 18. Okay, 18. Yep. 22 and 18. It says Revelation 22 and 18. Let me see. What okay, let's start up. Let's start up. Uh, verse 20, uh, in verse 17, right? It said, In the spirit. And the bride say, come, and let him that hears say, come, let him that is the thirst come, and who, whosoever will, let them take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of, words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, shall God take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city holy city and from the things which are written in this book and that's clearly telling you if you're not written in the book of life you're getting cast into the lake of fire you're getting cast into the lake of fire and not just only that too that's why it says when you add you gonna the plague is gonna be added on, onto you that's why men are waxing worse and worse <laughs> this, right. is, this is the reason why men are waxing worse and worse you know what I'm saying because of that lack of understanding. 
You know, they got to they got to shape shift the scriptures. It says so out of the holy city. Yep. You're not going into the holy city by doing what you're doing. Again, yeah. all throughout the Old Testament, we know who the uncircumcised are. We know who the Gentiles are. But when it comes to the New Testament, now the Lord said, ah, this is a nuance. Now all power has been given to me. Now I'm glorified, right? Now going to the Gentiles, the Gentiles aren't the Gentiles anymore? Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, read because I said that if you could do this for me, bro. Um, read two, tw uh, Revelation. Start at one, twenty-two and one, right? So yep. Revelation oh, twenty-two yep. and one. Yep, and then read it into two. The point is in two. All right, this is Revelation twenty-two and one, and he he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystals, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, right? Which bared 12 manners of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Yeah, the fruit, it tells you, right, um, that the fruit were for the nation of Israel, all right? And the leaves of the tree was what? For the healing of the nations, right? The Gentiles, the Gentiles that are going to be saved. Let's prove that, right? Go to, um, jump down to twenty. The twenty uh second verse. Um, you can start at uh, uh twenty four or whatever you want to start, bro. But the point is in twenty two. Um, what is it? Uh, I know the point is in uh, it's like your twenty four. Um, Re Revelation twenty one. Oh, Revelation twenty one. Yep, I got you. Slack you, bro. Revel no, that's all. This all good. Revelation twenty one and twenty four. Yep. And it says, um. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Yeah, so and there's nothing. The gates, nobody, you got it, bro. You got it, bro. Verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut all, at all by day, but there shall be no night there. You got it, bro. No, no. So you, you brothers, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's saying what it's saying, you know. Um, if if you if you so when you go back, oh yeah, you could go back, you could go back, bro. Let's go back to here. Let's go to this envy and the idolatry. Um, I, I want to make a point too before you go. Go up real quick. Um, yep. okay. So start at nineteen again, right? I want to make a point yep. too. Uh, uh, Yakalum, have um Revelations the third chapter on debt, but you got it, bro. Read this. Uh, nineteen. Yep. Uh, hold on. You said have Galatians the third on deck? Yeah, three and one on deck. But Krab, yep. read Galatians yep. five and nineteen. Uh, this is uh, Galatians 5 and 19. Now the word. Now we're gonna, we looked at the other side. Now we're going to look at we looked at the, the righteous side. We're going to look at the evil side now, right? Which is the works of the flesh or the works of I.E. of Esau or the works of, of Ishmael or the works of Haggai or the works Cain. of Mount Sinai or the works of Cain or the works of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You have to lump these two all in together like that. You have mm -hmm. to. Or the works of, um, of, of King Saul. Right, in which the heavenly father never wanted King Saul to rule over you guys. You wanted King Saul. That was of the self-willed. That was of the flesh, of the human nature that wanted King Saul to rule over you because the, the Lord said, I'm your king. But you wanted to be like the other nations. Just like the whole story of the, the rest of the people that wanted to venture off and do their own thing, which was not of the spirit. So this is what we're up against. If you're ever in a pickle or a jam, just remember the twos. Am, 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 I, am, I, am, I, am I Isaac here? Or am I uh, Ishmael? Am I Esau or am I Jacob? You know, am I Cain or am I Abel? You know, am I King David or am I King Saul? Am I am I Paul or am I Saul? You know, who are you? Are you are you Peter before? Um, he was uh, what he said. Um, Satan desired to have you, but when you're strengthened, you know, um, um, uh, uh, work on your brothers, strengthen your brothers as well. So you had the Peter that was walking in accordance to the flesh that denied Yahweh Shai, that uh, took off a sword and cut the ear off of the, he was moving in the flesh, but he got strengthened. And then he began to turn up in the spirit. So you you, you had a glimpse of a, a, a old covenant Peter and a new covenant Peter. And the Lord showed you all these characteristics within certain men, within um, Abraham, you know. He showed you these characteristics within these certain men. So you have to identify these characters. You have to look at this. That's right. Um, <clears throat> Galatians 5 and 19. <clears throat> it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, us as revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such it says would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Man, what what are those things? What do those attributes remind you of? How can you not think of Esau when you think of 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 you know what I'm saying these things, man? Sedition, jealousy, wrath, adultery, uncleanlessness, right? King, king, oh, yep. king, yeah, hatred, jealousy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wrath, yeah. All these different things, yeah. Strife, so you know, know. just yeah. caution strife. If the if the Lord said don't do something that's gonna cause strife, and you continue to do it, and then when you're called out on it, you justify why you do it, bro. That's dangerous, bro. That's dangerous. You cause strife amongst brethren. That's dangerous. The scriptures say, um, what is it? These six things I hate, yea, seven are abomination unto me. Yep. A man that soweth discourse among brethren. Yep. You 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 should be trying to cause um. You know, and we're not all going to come together, but let it not be on your dime. You know what I'm saying? Let it not be on your dime. You're supposed to be found what? Blameless, as the scriptures say. Yeah. That's right. Well, you, got, um, happened, you got Galatians 3. We can end it off on that one. Yeah. Yep. This is the book of Galatians 3 and 1 because it tells you, oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Yahweh Shai Mashiach have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now, one this of those one of those fruits, one of the fruits of that wickedness is idolatry. Oh, and what's talking not idolatry is idolatry as well, but witchcraft. So the reason why I had this brother read the, the book of Galatians, because what a lot of you men are doing, and we'll we'll read this a little bit of this and just we'll close out on um the scripture we, ironically we was gonna start out with, which was uh Romans the Romans 10 chapter. 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what, what what men are doing is they're 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 causing men to be cursed, all right. Um, trying to come off as if they're holier and more righteous than now, all right. And and Galatians is gonna go into it, bro. But you got it, brother. This only what I learn of you: receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and work of miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed the Lord and it was accounted to him righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture for seeing that the Lord would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Mm -hmm. To back you, bro, the scripture says if you break one, you break them all. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Lord. It is evident. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Lord. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. <laughs> but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Mashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree and if i may add going back to when brothers read how the lord nailed those ordinances that was against us he nailed them to the cross it says that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through yahweh shai mashiach that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith i want to read this this is romans chapter 10 verse 1 dear brothers and sisters this is the not the longing of my heart and prayers for God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have uh, for God, but it's a misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's ways of making people right with themselves, 
refusing to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. You might have to reread that again, but it says what it says. <laughs> Shit, it, it says, says what it exactly says, what man. It say, bro. So we, for the sake of time, bro, you know, we're going to close it out. Um, uh, we, we hope and pray that that was edifying, which is always is the purpose. Uh, our, our goals when we upload these lessons is to solely to preach the word and to edify. We understand that we're going to have opposition that's going to come up against us because um, our Lord already commanded us to. Uh, we understand what's happening in, in, in the spirit and, and we see. All right. We see who guys are. And it's our job just to just teach. If it, and what the Heavenly Father does, um, the Lord is long suffering and patient. If, if it's the Lord of the world to, to take one, of, the Lord to take a guy out of the snare, that's the Heavenly Father. That's between Him and the Heavenly Father. But as far as us, we're just vessels that the Holy Spirit is flowing through um, to teach His word and will continue to do so. All right. So with that, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakadash. Peace, love, and salutations to uh, you, you sincere brothers. To tell your brothers to keep pushing. Shalom. Shalom.